Hi guys, how are you? Type A here. Lot of bits. I'm going to. I'm, I'm experimenting with recording, recording myself using the camera of my cell phone, and then I'm going to sync this video with the recording of of the software, the, the recorder of OBS, of Renoise in Adobe Premiere. So if this works and it's not much of a hassle to set this up for every video then I'm going to be able to explain the tracks from scratch uh, production videos what I'm doing I'm going to to be able to explain my ideas my process the way I like to create my sounds and arrangements and renoise and this video is going to be about subtractive synthesis for beginners how to to make like a really simple sound and in this video and then in the part two I'm going to to set up a more complex change of effects and explain how, how meta devices can be like an infinite resource of modulation and inside Renos especially if you're trying to mimic the, the sound of synthesizer but only using the sampler I mean using Renoise with no BSDs no external effects and I think this is going to be cool so for a start I like to go to the sampler root this to in my case I'm using like my special template root this for instrument track 2 and then load a cheap soft waveform First thing we're going to do is because if you play this, we're like ultra low range. Pitch this up to 24 semitones. I'm still in bass range, but I would like to to play like a synth bad sound. So I'm going to pitch the the overall instrument 24 semitones more. So I'm going to play chords. Also turn down the volume. Okay, so normally if we were using a subtractive synth, a well to control the amplitude is to use an amplitude envelope. So we can do just the same using the modulation tab here. And in this set one, which is automatically routed the waveform we just added, use a attack, hold, decay, and sustain and release envelope. This is the, the easiest uh, modulation device here. To control the amplitude of the sounds because when we're doing this we can we can tell uh, the type of sound we're going to to make for instance if I wanted to make a plug sound I just go to zero, uh, zero attack put the sustain to zero also and then mess with the decay parameter like But now we're going to make like a a pad sound, so I'm going to raise the sustain a bit more. I'm going to increase the decay and I'm going to increase the attack. And also increase the release. Now we get this classic default sounding preset in every subtractive synthesizer out there. So now we can start adding effects, which is, I mean, effects like filter, chorus, reverb, delay, CQs, the, the type of way shaping tools that you find in subtractive synthesizer. So create effects change and put an analog filter. Now the filter, the filter is static and you don't have any way to control this using only the filter. So I'm going to start using the macros, which is the macro functionality of the sampler instrument. You access by clicking the macro and then clicking here. And then a lot of uh, a list of parameters, it is a, uh, shows us available for control 
when you see this kind of orange color uh, on top. So select the filter. Now we can move the filter. And you can make by hand using this this macro one the movement you want to, to make to the filter. So something that I like to make that is really easy and powerful when using macros is to define the range of the of the parameter that you're going to control. So if we go to zero in zero the filters the filter cutoff is going to be on 0 0.04 kilohertz which is like 40 hertz and you can scale this up the minimum value to in zero in macro one it will be like I don't know like 0.52 and then you can do the same for the max range here go to the maximum value and load this up so so we are now moving in a specific range Okay, rename this macro to filter and then let's add something more to this like a delay like delays especially with this 3 to 4 or 4 to 6 configuration so okay let's write some chords here I'm going to use my MIDI keyboard to record this stuff. Go here, select this recording, press Ctrl Q or Command Q to quantize the recording. It's still a bit out of place, but for the purpose of this video okay so we can access now this parameter in the sequencer view by adding a instrument instrument macros if you load this device, it will show the, the list of uh, available macros that you can automate in the automation window. So if we go to here, here uh, below, and we click on filter, we can now access this curve. So let's draw something. pretty cool so we now have this kind of like the false sounding patch in every scene out there with a bit of delay we can still add more stuff behind to make it more like interesting so the second thing we're going to do is to load second filter the digital filter so we can access a different shape of filtering and turn this to notch this notch band right here and notice that the sound and I'm not going to assign this to the to the macro I've just created because I want this to be some kind of unpredictable movement so I'm going to use the LFO the LFO when, he, when using this it appears as a meta device and you need to route it to control a specific parameter so you go into this destination you click on effects change one digital filter filter cutoff and it instantly starts to move now we can mess with with these controls to affect this parameter like for instance speed frequency the offset is going to 
to move the the amount of filter cutoff to the left, to the right, or to the left. Now I like to use this this random shape to to see to, to have this move in a random way. So in order to release a bit of the, the tension that's going to, to cause this abrupt movement, movement uh, decrease the, the inertia value here. Think of this inertia value as a smooth for every cutoff and resonance movement in the filter. Now we have this interesting movement going on in the sound, which is not completely typical and interesting to use. And the other thing I like to do every time I'm designing this type of sounds is to set up a second effects change, calling wet because I'm going to use river and stuff in a maximum dry way, dry wet and add some chorus and flangers and at the beginning of the change to mess with the river so but for this video I'm going to use a new river plugin that I that I'm using which is in reactor it's a ensemble called Stellar by this dude Boscomac all of all of these ensembles are by him and all of them are awesome. This stellar device which is kind of like a shimmer type of river. Now in order to to send the the output of this chain to the second change chain we need to use a send device. With the send device anywhere in the change, but taking consideration that if you put it on, for instance, right here at the beginning, the sound that it will output to the second change will be the, the initial waveform sound completely unprocessed. If we put it this, uh, behind the filter, it will be the filter sound but without the delay and so on. So I like for 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 this instrument, I will, I will put it completely on the back. I'm going to use the keep source so it don't. It don't cut the river don't cut the the output of the first change. Send this to wet. Now you can hear the shimmer in action. Now we can control this the amount of signal that we're sending with this now over here. Really cool stuff. Really, really cool stuff. Now in any traditional scene, you have access to more than one oscillator to make the sound. If we're using as extractive scenes, we have like two or three oscillators that we can choose different type of waveform. And the analogy to the sampler will be like to add a second waveform. We can click here, add a new sample, and then throw in another waveform, another loop, the thing that we want. So. In order to make this sound like a traditional scene, I'm going to use again the soft loop waveform. But I'm going to pitch this up by
to make like the 24 semitones in, the, in relation to the 31 semitones it's basically a fifth I'm pitching this up 7 semitones in relation Now, if we wanted to make it like a whole chord, we can duplicate this and put it on 36. Now, if we want to control a bit of the, the resonance and the the amount of reverb of this shimmer device we can add a third change of effects call it dry or just to differentiate them use a second send device in the first change put it to mute and send it to the dry and do the same here put it to dry select mute so you will now mix the the output of uh, effects change 1 and 2 and send it to dry or we can add a filter again put this on move for move for come here change this again Now we can still add in stuff behind and it will be really really interesting like add a delay again. Put this in four, six. Put this in twelve. This deep bad sound, really interesting sound. Okay, so this is Extractive Synthesis for Beginners Part 1, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, part 2 I'm going to, to set up a more complex sound, building on top of this sound. I'm going to introduce to you guys to some new metal devices in Renoise that are going to... I mean, we're going to be able to use in even more complex modulation using a trigger signal to to set up a device that can control multiple parameters at once and this is going to be a, even way more cooler so I hope you guys are excited about this about this stuff so peace out hope you enjoy watching this video subscribe to my channel hit like leave your comments share your own techniques peace